Hello, my friends. It's the exciting time of the year for all the storytellers and the film enthusiasts. The Oscars, it's right around the corner. And in today's video, I'm going to share my personal top five films for this year's Best Picture nominees and then explain why. And at the end of this video, I want to also share a film that I really, really love that's not on this year's Best Picture nomination list. But it did receive two different Oscars nominations this year. Can you guess what it is? If you want to find out, stick till the end. Before we dive in, I want to emphasize how incredible incredibly diverse this year's films are and they are also different and unique in their own way. Even though I'm only going to share my top five, I genuinely enjoy them all. Though I'm a filmmaker, my ranking is only based on my own life experience as well as how I connected to each every single film as an audience. I'm not going to critic any of the film because as a filmmaker, I know how difficult it is to make a film happen and you never know what goes behind the scenes when a filmmaker making certain decisions. Yeah, so without further ado, let's get started. Number five, Mastros. This film feels like a symphony. It's kind of like a well-crafted stage play. It also feels like a historical masterpiece that you will see in a gallery. And then the acting is brilliant. Bradley Cooper chose not to show the close-up of the character in many of the scenes. And the actors have to express the feeling and then flow through the scene with their body language, as well as their tone of voice and then the pace when they deliver the lines. To show emotion without showing emotion through face it's very difficult things to do. That's why I think this film is quite a masterpiece. My film pick number four, The Zone of Interest. A great film has the ability to make audience go quiet and become introspective. And then that's what this film did to me. The film brought me into a meditative state and I can even feel the rhythm of my breath. Even though on the surface I'm very peaceful, I feel my heart wrenching throughout the entire film. Even right now I'm thinking about it, I feel like tearing up. This film, it's almost like a therapy session. It makes you confront your uncomfortable feelings and then sit with it in order to heal. I became really quiet for a while after I watched this film. My film pick number three, Past Lives. It's so surreal that I'm saying this right now because I was so scared of watching this film for a long time and in fact I was avoiding to watch the film and I pretty much saved it until the last to watch. I watched the film trailer and I was worried about the film is going to trigger certain emotion of mine as an immigrant as well as an Asian filmmaker. And also through the trailer I was worried the film is encouraging self-involved attitude to pursue so-called love. Turns out the film is nothing like that and in fact it's the opposite. The film celebrates love but it also shines light on the beauty of fate. It makes you wonder about the possibility of life but it also grounds you in the present moment. It's the story about inyan, the fate. There's the same word in Chinese as well called Yuan. Anyway, the shot design, the camera flow, the pace are all so well done. It shows the beauty of in our lifetime. We'll never know where we will be, who we will meet, and then spend our precious life with. My film pick number two, Poor Things. I love everything about this film. The sound, the music, the image, the acting, the set decoration, the costume, and the most importantly, the fun. Watching this film feels like I went on this journey with Bella, and in a way, it's my own journey. It's like a dancing, the celebration of life. The world is so big, and the life is so small and seemingly insignificant, yet we are experiencing joy, sorrow, and all the good and the bad in this little thing we call living. It made me feel that maybe our world is so chaotic right now, but our lives are still so precious and magnificent. My pick number one, give it a guess. It's Anatomy of a Fall. This is my favorite film of the year. The film is slow paced and it requires me to read subtitle. With my severe short attention span, I found myself will give it great attention. I was very focused throughout the entire film. All the characters in the film are so complicated. And then watching the court case is forcing me to sit with the uncomfortable 
feeling that I have to admit how entitled, ignorant, and the lack of self-awareness our society is. And watching the court case unfold as a virtual juror myself makes me start reflecting on myself and then wondering what kind of role I'm playing in this society. So at the beginning of this video, I said I'm going to shine a light on a film that's not on the Best Picture nomination list. The film is Nyad and it's on Netflix. It's just one of those classic themes that I always loved. I love to watch a character pursue a dream with great focus and never ever want to give up. But most importantly, the characters are so interesting and the film is quite funny. And then both actresses delivered a master's level of acting. Both actresses got this year's nomination in the category of acting. They merged themselves with the character so well, it feels like they are the character instead of trying to act like the character. Generally, I find movies I like always have a good screenplay as their foundation. All my five favorite films of this year are also either nominated for Best Screenplay or Best Adopted Screenplay. That says a lot about the importance of screenwriting. And if you are interested in how to get started to become a screenwriter, you can watch this video right here and be patient, be present, stay creative. I'll see you next week. Bye. Pew.